Alrighty, uh, howdy folks. You noticed how I started with the howdy? Uh, that's what I'm going to do for every lecture that I record. If you were to be in a real classroom, regular classroom, that's what I would do. Uh, I do that because I'm a country boy from Tennessee. You know, in, in the South, we speak with a Southern accent and we say things like howdy. Uh, and if you looked at me, if you saw me ever, you will figure out exactly why I call myself a country boy from Tennessee, okay? Um, all right, anyway, let's get serious. So welcome to Math 2110, Calculus 3. I love Cal, Cal 3. Uh, it's been a while since I taught it, but uh, man, it's a wonderful course. You will, especially as engineers, you will see its application in quite a few places. Chemical engines, my goodness, all your process design and all those stuff, you're going to see a whole bunch of Calculus 3 stuff. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, what's my name? Uh, yeah, my name is Sam. Uh, some Indian thing. Uh, uh, so typically what I do is as soon as I state my name, I do this. I give a pronunciation guide for the last name. Okay. So let me see if that helps you. As you notice, it's got four syllables. Na. The first syllable is na. R I is re. Okay. Na re met la. Na re met la. Those of you who can trill R's, and you can if you can say rrr, ruffles have ridges, then it is na re met la. But if you cannot, that's okay. Na re met la is perfectly fine. Cool. Uh, my PhD is actually in mechanical engineering, and probably that's why I'm really curious and interested in teaching Calculus 3. Cool. Cal 3, differential equations, Cal 2, these are all my favorite courses. Okay, look, let's go on. Uh, so, we'll start with Chapter 12, Section 1, which is about three-dimensional coordinate system. Quite a few of these things are already familiar to you, especially if you've taken physics and uh, and have done vectors and uh, 3D coordinates. Yeah, you, this should be familiar to you, but uh, because I have to cover it, I'll go ahead and uh, cover it. Okay, maybe there are some interesting things that you will uh, you will figure out. Let's start with that familiar um, 2D coordinate system, right? We have x-axis and a y-axis. And suppose we want to locate a point, we use the coordinates, the ordered pair, x, y. If we say the coordinates of a point are x and y, how do we actually locate that point? Well, simple, right? You go on the x-axis, you go a distance of x, and then draw a vertical line. And you similarly, from the origin, you go to a distance of y on the y-axis and draw a horizontal line there where these two lines intersect that's where you have x y right cool uh, so that's something that you already know now the question is what happens how do we do this in a 3d coordinate system right i have uh, we would have obviously x y z coordinates an ordered triple it is called uh, ordered triple uh, what's the what's the idea of ordered that that adjective ordered it simply says uh, x y is different from y x 2 3 is different from 3 2 right that order is important in the same way x y z is an ordered triple and that gives you the location of a point Okay, before I talk about this locating a point x, y, z, there's something I'd like us to notice about this x, y, z coordinates that I drew. You can think of this y as going to the right. As you look at it, it's going to your right. And as I'm speaking, I'm looking at it, and it's going towards my right as well. And 
Similarly, Z is going upward. However, in what way is this X going? It's not going down at some angle. That's not how we are supposed to interpret this. That is because to represent a 3D coordinate system in a 2D plane, uh, we have to resort to certain peculiar things. For instance, you should, you should interpret this X as actually coming out perpendicular to the, to the interface, whatever, if you're looking at it on a computer, it's sticking out directly towards you. What, what is sticking out directly towards you? This X coordinate, the, this X, the axis, the X axis is sticking right at you. Okay, so, but it is represented in a 2D this way. Okay, that's one point I want to mention. The second thing I want to mention is, look at how we labeled X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'm calling this as the x-axis, that and this is y and this is z, right? The thing is, uh, is that the only way? Could I have called, say, for instance, this right side thing as x and the one that's going up as y and the one that is coming towards us as z? Is that okay? x, y, z? Is that all right? Mm, okay, let's say yes. Is it entirely arbitrary? Could I have, let's say, called the going up as X, this leave this as Y, and call this as Z? The thing is, no, you cannot do that. So you cannot just stick anything and just say, I just will call them X, Y, Z. No, you cannot. That is because these coordinate axes have to obey what's called the right hand rule now to explain the right hand rule if i were to be in a classroom i can actually physically look at you and demonstrate uh, but okay you have to do this uh, for me all right ready uh, stick your hand in the right hand in front of you and point all your uh, four fingers forget about the thumb the the fing four fingers other than the thumb, point them towards you. Well, to do that, you can do that in many different orientations. What do I mean by that? You can rotate your palm. You can still be pointing your four fingers towards your face, but you can rotate your palm in any direction, the 360 degrees, right? But this time, I'm asking you to load orient your palm in such a way that when you curl your fingers those fingers should be curling to the right that is towards positive y does that make sense you can orient your palm in any direction but there is only one particular direction where when you curl your fingers the four fingers they curl towards the positive y and now, after you orient your fingers like that, orient your palm like that, look at the direction of your thumb. That should be pointing towards positive Z. Okay? So, when you put that restriction, that X fingers extending towards X, when curled towards positive Y, the thumb should be pointing to positive Z. That means you cannot do the last uh, orientation that I talked about, which was X pointing up, Y pointing to the right, and Z pointing towards us. Because in that case, you will orient your fingers upward and turn your palm so that you can curl your fingers towards positive Y. And if you do that, your thumb would be pointing in the negative Z direction. Oh, that's a no-no. So that particular choice of X, Y, and Z is a no-no, okay? So keep that in mind. The next thing I want to show is, okay, now let's get on with it. Well, how do you locate a three-dimensional point in this system? Suppose we want to locate a point called X, Y, Z. 
So first thing we do is, along the x-axis, we go a distance of x. So that means from the origin, along the x-axis, we go to a point which is at a distance of positive x, whatever the x value is. If it is positive, you come towards positive x. If it's negative, you go the opposite direction, right? Okay. Once you are there at a distance of x, now draw a line parallel to the y-axis. Cool? All right. The next thing you do is, similarly, along the y-axis from the origin, you go to a distance of y which is that point. Are you with me? On along y-axis, go to a distance of y. This time, draw a line parallel to the x-axis. And these two lines will intersect at some point here. Right? So, the next thing you do is, you, join, you draw a line passing through the origin and this point of intersection. That's the third, that's the next thing that you do. After this, you go to a z value of z along the z axis, okay? And that's the point. This time, you draw a line parallel to that line that we got from origin to the point of intersection, draw a line parallel to that. And, and then, finally, you draw a vertical line, or vertical line in the sense, a line parallel to the z-axis at this point of intersection. And that intersects this line at some point. And that point of intersection, lo and behold, is our x, y, z. Cool. Uh, so, I'm sure you agree. That was not so straightforward at all. But then you get used to it. I think the textbook talks about something like a drawing a box or something like that. If you if you want to read that and, and figure out how to do it, the box method, that's fine too. But I find this one fairly simple and straightforward. Right. Now the thing is, uh, even if you look at this point, this point is on this xy plane at a distance of x on the along the x-axis. It is at a distance of y along the y-axis and going up at a distance of z. Notice this distance is the same as that distance because these two lines, the z-axis and this line are parallel to each other and these two lines are parallel to each other okay so that's how you locate a point I'm, I'm going to solve a problem to show you plot the point one negative one one I'll use the same method that uh, we saw uh, first thing uh, we should do is draw XYZ coordinate system um, and uh, what's the first thing oh the X coordinate is one what does that mean? We need to go to an x distance along the x-axis, a distance of 1, and draw a line parallel to the y-axis. Right? Cool. And after that, we notice that the y-coordinate is negative 1. So from the origin, along the y-axis, negative 1. Oh, that means we need to go toward the negative direction by a distance of one unit. And there, at that point, let's draw a line parallel to the x-axis this time, right? At, at an x distance of one, a line parallel to y. At a y distance of negative one, a line parallel to the x-axis. And then let's draw a line passing through this zero, uh, the origin, and this point of intersection. After that, let's figure out the, the z coordinate is 1. So along the positive z axis, we'll go by 1 unit. And this time, we'll draw a parallel line to this line. And 
finally we'll draw a vertical line at this point of intersection see where it cuts this and the intersection of those two that's where your one negative one one is cool uh, you really need to know how to do this because it's entirely possible that when we get to some vectors uh, you may need to draw a vector that a position what is called a position vector going from the origin to a point like one negative one one and so you would have to go through all these steps and 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 draw that vector okay okay so this is how you plot a point a 3d point what else yeah then there are let's look at different planes that are available in a 3d system the plane that you see there we call that as xy plane now um, or it's also called as a z plane notice notice you can use two letters xy or you can use one letter z okay uh, there is no such thing as xyz plane there's an xy plane or you can call that a z plane what's the idea the two letters x y indicate that the z coordinate is zero and that means all the points lie in all the points lie in that plane containing x and y axes only every point on that plane will have a zero value for z okay can you help me here can you visualize uh, this plane uh, well pretty much uh, put a piece of paper on a flat ground or your table surface if you have if you are sitting on a table uh, sitting at a table that flat surface is your xy plane because x is sticking towards you y is going to your right and uh, z is going up right now this is what i want you to can you figure out the direction of the of a perpendicular to the plane right you have a plane and there is a perpen a line that is perpendicular to the plane well that perpendicular plane if xy is horizontal that line would be vertically up or down right vertical and that vertical direction is nothing but the z direction and that's why we call this a z plane so the single letter z is an indicator of which way that perpendicular to the plane is in fact we will learn that that line perpendicular line is called a normal line so the normal to the plane is actually along the z axis so that's why this is called z plane and also i kind of lied here a little I'm showing this xy plane as just a simple rectangle uh, in that plane. But the truth is, when, when I say xy plane, it actually extends infinitely horizontally. Even though I've shown only a single rectangle, right? So it extends all the way, infinity and in left to right, and also from forward to backwards, infinity. Okay. And well, uh, similarly, yz plane is the same as the x plane and zx plane, or xz plane or zx plane is the same as y plane. Same arguments apply. You need to be familiar with this also. One more interesting thing. I mentioned to you that when we say xy plane, that means z is zero, right? Similarly, yz plane that means x is zero and xz plane means y is zero you got to remember this i'm going to show you a, a problem where we need this concept of hey xz plane means set y equal to zero you know you need to know that concept all right next uh distance between two points hmm distance between two points do we know this thing in two dimensions yeah 
if I give you uh, coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2, there are two points with those coordinates, and I ask you what's the distance between x1, y1, and x2, y2, uh, you say simply square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square, right? Yeah, what is it in three dimensions then? Well, it looks actually very similar. Clearly, we wouldn't say x1, y1, we'll say x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2. Those are the two points. What's the formula for the distance? Surprise, surprise. You just add a z2 minus z1, the quantity square, to the two-dimensional version. Add a plus z2 minus z1, the quantity square, and under the square root, that's it. Cool. That's the idea. Uh, we need this concept also. And there's a problem based on this. Quite interesting. Determine whether the points lie on a straight line. What? Determine whether the points lie on a straight line. Any thoughts? How do you go about figuring out whether the given three points are in a line? Well, check this out. We will determine the collinearity. Oh, collinear means fall on the same line. Okay, that's a fancy word. Uh, we will determine the collinearity of the points by finding distances. Really? Yeah. Let's say we have three points A, B, and C uh, on this line. Can we figure out that they are actually on the same line? Yeah, we can. For instance, if we measure distance AB and BC, add AB distance AB to distance plus B distance BC, shouldn't that be the same as AC? Right, distance AC? That's all there is to it. That's going to be our strategy. Uh, if they are not collinear, that wouldn't be true. If this C were to be off of this straight line, AB plus BC would not equal AC, okay? That's, uh, you have to use something called triangle inequality. But in a simple linear case, that's it. So how do I, what do I want to do? Uh, we want to first find the distance AB. Distance AB, I'm calling it as D sub AB. And I'm applying the formula. Uh, X2 minus X1, three minus two, the quantity square, plus y2 minus y1, 7 minus 4, the quantity square, plus negative 2 minus 2, the quantity square, and then simple arithmetic, right? So we get square root of 26. Similarly, distance BC turns out to be square root of 45, distance AC turns out to be square root of 3. Now the thing is, I kind of lied. The, uh, what do, why do I mean? Nobody said A, B, and C, they are actually located in that particular order. It's entirely possible that B is all the way to the left and A is to in the middle and C is to the right. right? That's entirely possible. So keeping that in mind, all we need to do is Hey, which one is the biggest one? Square root of 45 is the largest value. So B and C must be occupying the opposite ends of this line, of this line segment, right? B and C must be at the opposite end that, because that's how they would have the greatest distance. And the other ones, A, B, so B, C occupy uh, the extreme end, so A must be in the middle. Okay, that's fine. So is square root of 26 plus square root of three equal to square root of 45? Uh, I don't know, man. Let me punch into your calculator. Yeah, I understand. Square root of 26 is what? Close to square root of 25, which is five. 
square root of 3 close to 4. So square root of 4 is 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. Yikes. Um, square root of 45. Uh, that's pretty close to square root of 49. Dang. Yeah, anyway, uh, I don't think when you add them up, yeah, maybe I lied. You should go ahead and punch into calculator and see. Is there some other simple, simpler way? Man, 9 plus 26, 3 plus 26 is 29. Plus 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 26. Eh, anyway, I think. Uh, okay, so it turns out no two distances when added give the third distance. The points are not collinear. Okay, that's the idea. Let's move along. Equation of a sphere. So one thing that happens whenever people talk about distance, fairly soon after that, they talk about a sphere. What's distance got to do with the sphere? Have you heard a term called locus? L-O-C-U-S, locus. Uh, locus is basically a set of points that satisfy a certain condition. What is the locus of, that means what are the set of points that are equidistant from a fixed point? What are all the points that are at the same distance, same uh, distance, whatever the distance is, from a fixed point? In two dimensions, that's a circle. In three dimensions, that's a sphere. So basically, the distance is always the same to every point on a sphere from its center. Because the distance formula is involved, typically people, right after talking about the distance formula, they talk about the equation of a sphere or equation of a circle in case of two dimensions. So basically, uh, if we have a three-dimensional system and there's a sphere with center located at HKL, those are the coordinates of the center, and its radius is R, the equation of the sphere is given by x minus h the quantity square plus y minus k the quantity square equals z minus l the quantity square equals r square. Or if we take the square root on both sides, square root of this is equal to r. Oh, duh. Every point on the sphere has x, y, z coordinates some x, y, z coordinates, and the distance from that, that sphere, surface of the sphere, to the center must equal the radius, distance. And what simply we did here, we squared that formula. And that's it. That's where this came from. Okay? Now there's a Sorry, silly little problem. Uh-oh. Um... The distance, there's a silly problem um, that uh, they want us to solve in this. I don't know. It may not be silly. Find the equation of a sphere with center this. Uh, describe its intersection with each of the coordinate planes. Ooh. Not only do we need to find the equation of this, but we need to find its intersection with each of the coordinate planes. I think that part makes it rather interesting. Okay, let's see. Solution. So the center is, uh, the sphere is HKL is 2, negative 6, negative, uh, positive 4. We figure out H to be 2, K to be negative 6, and L to be 4. Are we good? Simple, straightforward. And what is R? And they said radius is 5, so R must be 5. And what do we do now? Plug and check uh, into that formula. The equation of the sphere is x minus h, the quantity square, h is 2, 
y minus negative y minus negative 6 y minus k is y minus negative 6 making it y plus 6 the quantity square right z minus 4 the quantity square equals phi square so that's the easy part that's actually the silly part i apologize if i insulted your intelligence by solving a problem like that um but then What's with this describe its intersection with each of the coordinate planes? That's rather interesting. To find intersection with XY plane, okay, that's what the question is asking. When this sphere intersects the coordinate planes, that means XY plane, then the YZ plane, and the ZX plane, what do you get? Well, like I said, when I mentioned the xy plane, xy plane has a z value of zero. So we simply set z equal to zero in this equation. Cool. Let's see what happens when we do that. So as promised, I went to the equation of the sphere and plugged in zero for uh, z. And then this turns out to be when we simplify this uh, negative 4 the quantity square is uh, 16 and so on the right hand side 25 I subtracted 16 from both sides and this is what we get what in the world is that x minus 2 the quantity square plus y plus 6 the quantity square equals 3 square any idea well does that look like x minus h the quantity square plus y minus k the quantity square equals r square? Does that ring a bell? Hey, that's a circle, man. Yeah, man. That is a circle. What's the center of the circle? 2 and negative 6. Well, z is 0. 2, negative 6, 0. That's the center of a circle, and what is its radius? Three units, three square, r square. So r is three. Aha. Uh -huh. So when this sphere is placed in the three D system, you will notice that it actually intersects with the x y plane, the horizontal plane, and where it, the plane and the sphere intersect, that part would be a circle of radius 3 and center located at x equals 2 and y equals negative 6. Right? I'll actually show that to you. Okay. Uh, should I show that right away? Bear with me. I, I, I will show that to you. Cool. I, I don't want to right away do that because there is some something that's going to happen and, and I want you to I want to alert you to that fascinating thing okay cool so did we find uh, the intersection of your of our sphere with uh, one of the coordinate planes x y plane yeah we did uh, how about this um, the center yeah okay this is what I mentioned what about y z plane so for that we'll set x equal to zero so I go back to the original equation, plug 0 for x and leave y and z alone and then do the same thing. Oh, this turns out to be negative 2, the quantity square is positive 4 and so subtract 4 from both sides and we end up with this. What in the world is this an equation of? Oh, uh, this is also an equation of a circle but this is in the yz plane. And the center is located where? You tell me. Center is located, do not say positive 6. We have to say y minus something. So this is y minus negative 6. So the center is located at negative 6. A y, y equals negative 6 and z equals positive 4. Perfect. Wonderful. And what is its radius? Square root of 21, whatever that is. Cool. All right. So that is very similar. Uh, X Y done, Y Z done. What is, what else is left? Z X or X Z. 
to find we set y equal to 0 okay and when we do that uh, we get um, this and 6 square is uh, 36 36 when we subtract uh, we get what oh yeah we get negative 11 okay cool um, so what is this then come on man it's also a circle you know uh, okay what is uh, what is its where is its center located at x equals 2 and z equals 4 okay cool what is its radius uh, radius uh, uh, uh oh radius the square root of negative 11 can the square root uh, can you take a square root of a negative real number and get a real number you can you'll get a complex one but let's let's try to stay real no so physically what does this mean this is why i didn't want to show you in the 3d what does this physically mean the fact that you have radius squared to be negative 11. it actually means the sphere does not intersect the zx plane it does intersect the xy plane and the yz plane but not the zx plane cool that's the cool thing about it all right let me show you some of the squares cannot be negative the sphere does intersect the zx plane escape uh, So, I used what's called GeoGebra uh, as freely available software that you can download. I like the classic 5 version of it, and that's what I installed. Okay, so this is the sphere. I simply typed into the input box all the way at the bottom. There's an input box. I typed in our equation x minus 2, the quantity square, plus y plus 6, the quantity square. Um, blah blah is equal to some square five square something like that and it drew the sphere for me okay uh, the thing is the originally its uh, orientation yeah when it first drew the orientation was something like this and for some reason that always bothers me i have no idea what what in the world that means um, so I oriented this way, sort of to be consistent with how we set up the X, Y, Z axis. Okay. Now, which one is uh, X, which one and the Y and Z? Well, you remember when we talk about colors, we say R, G, B, right? R, G, B, red, green, and blue. X, Y, Z are R, G, B respectively. The red is X, and they have put a nice arrow also, arrowhead here. So uh, this is positive X, green is positive Y, and blue is Z. Okay, so this is X, Y, Z. Now, uh, you get some sense of this being a sphere, right? So if I were to turn this, I don't know how well it's going to be rendered in a video. Right now, the whole thing is fairly smooth for me. Um, okay. And then, what else were we asked? Okay, intersection with the different planes. So, I typed Z equal to zero, and it automatically drew this XY plane for me. Right? Notice. The z value is zero uh, if you don't trust me uh, check that out right so that's the z okay. so that's the xy plane and we want to see where these two things intersect the xy plane and the sphere so i actually do that also and you will see that it is actually a circle see that 
that's where it intersected. Or if you look at it in this orientation. So you can download GeoGebra and, and draw all these things and verify for yourself. You can turn it any which way you want so that and have fun. Cool. So clearly XY plane mm, intersection is a circle like uh, our map told us. So let me turn the visibility of these things off. I don't want that XY plane and I don't want that circle. Now YZ plane, I just simply typed into the input box X equal to zero. And lo and behold, that's the X equal to zero or YZ plane. And then I intersected the sphere and this. Uh, for intersection, what did I do? Uh, notice this. This particular icon says intersect two surfaces and says the tooltip says select two surfaces. So basically, you click on this one and then you click on equation one, which is the sphere, and then equation two. All right. Uh, I sincerely hope uh, this gets recorded. Uh, something happened. It just uh, stopped on me. Um,